Hey everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography. Well, it's mid, almost late October here in Florida. One of my favorite times of year here because we're getting a lot of our wintering birds showing up. And one of those species is the belted kingfisher, which is a tour I do each year. This will be my eighth year if I get a bird come into my perch. And that's what I'm getting ready to do this morning. Still dark, uh, a little windy this morning, but the weather should be fairly decent. And so I'm getting my little trailer that I use to get all my equipment out to the perch area together. And part of that is this right here, which is a small portable blind. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. And it's the use of blinds or hides, uh, if you want to call them that. I actually kind of like hides better. <laughs> but uh, anyway, the use of blinds or hides to get close to birds for photography, wildlife in general, for photography purposes, and also camouflage and things like that, and how I actually use uh, a blind like this in my kingfisher photography. So if you're interested in learning more about the use of blinds and camouflage in general, uh, stay tuned. Well, it's light now, right? Mm -hmm. Sitting in my little personal blind here. You can probably see a little better now uh, what this is all about. I'm out trying to uh, get a kingfisher to come to my perch, a tour I do every winter, at least for the last seven winters I've done it. Very, very close in front of me. Shoot the R5 for the first time on King Fishers this morning. We'll see how it does. The eye autofocus is working really good to grab in the bird's eye, which is very difficult on a King Fisher because it's got dots on it. Likes the bird's eye. Sony will always grab the bird's wing dot. Not doing that here. Just gotta get him to see a fish. You can see how I'm using a tripod with a gimbal head because you have to keep the camera in the hole of the blind the whole time. You can't be dropping it down and picking it up and dropping it down and picking it up. Either. The bird will see that at movement and be gone in an instant. So you must use a tripod and of course a gimbal head is the way to go with that. And I'm using a small tripod. You don't need anything real stable. You just need something to hold the camera. And then the small blind, you don't want it to take up a bunch of room. And then of course, I like one with a center post. A lot of people don't like that, but for this it's perfect because then you can adjust the height when you're inside the blind without having to adjust the height all through. 
three legs, you just raise or lower the center post, and it's perfect. And then away you go. So, in this case, a small travel tripod with the center post with a light gimbal head is all you need. This guy's just sitting, he's looking. Still hasn't seen a fish, though, unfortunately. Or hasn't seen one. This is what it's all about, though. Sitting and waiting. Sitting and waiting. Now he's preening. Come on, dude. You gotta be hungry. Bam, right in the eye. All right, well, just had a fairly good session with a kingfisher for the first time this year, which is awesome. And, uh... So let's talk a little bit more about the hide, or the blind, whatever you want to call it that I'm in. Uh, it's a commercially made blind, obviously, but um, there's some things that are specific to my needs. One, as you can tell, it's made out of mesh. It's not a solid material for the most part. And here in Florida, that's absolutely critical, right? Um, you die in this thing from heat, uh, no airflow if it was a solid material. Now the ceiling, of it is black material here that is um, um, <laughs> obviously this is a public area where I am right and dog barking but uh, anyway it's relatively waterproof from the top so if it does rain you're somewhat protected uh, but it's necessary to be meshed like this like I said now this is the material on this is mostly brown right when you, when you buy camel material, unfortunately, or try to find blinds, most of them are made out of brown camouflage patterns because for some reason, everybody thinks that makes these things, anybody thinks that most people hunt in the fall and in the winter in colder climates where things turn brown. Well, here in Florida, it doesn't turn brown here very often in many places. So green is the camouflage color you want. So what I did is I added some uh, green camo mesh material, leafy type material, to this uh, blind to make it green and blend in better with the uh, vegetation that's here in Florida where I shoot. And the whole thing on the outside, and of course I'll show some outside shots, is green <clears throat> like this. And I just zip tied it to the material that's already uh, on the on the blind that comes with the blind now what I also did though is add some additional camel material on the inside on the opening of the blind where you would generally shoot out from because again depth is kind of a necessary thing the more depth you add to the blind the better it blends into bushes and, and grass and things like that but also because these blinds are made for hunting longer guns like rifles and stuff when you're sitting in the built-in seat this blind has a built-in seat the uh, the hole that you shoot out of is quite a distance in front of you too far for a lens from a camera to reach unless you're shooting something like a 600 f4 with a teleconverter on it then it might reach right but you don't want it to um, be sitting back in the blind the lens too much because then of course when you try to pan with a flying bird or a diving kingfisher in this case you're going to intercept the blind material and it, it's not going to work right you'll lose track of the bird so what I did was open up the front side of the blind completely added the green stuff here but added it so it comes in uh, closer to the camera so now even a short lens camera like I'm using right now, or a short lens setup like I'm using right now, this is a Canon R5 with the 100 to 500 on it. I can make it so that the lens penetrates through the camera material, and so that I don't have to worry about, um, you know, the camera material getting in the way of my shooting. Now, how did I do that? Well, I used these things, right? Um, I like to use stuff at hand, and I use binder clips right to clip the camel material that I added on the inside here to the ribs of the blind like that so and it goes up and around like that and in front like that and that way you can really tailor how far in it comes how far out it goes how tight the material is how loose it is stuff like that 
uh, really tailor it to your shooting scenario and your and your setup. Uh, so you know it's it's worked out really really well. Adding the green camouflage, adding more depth, has made it so that I can get set my blinds much closer to the birds I'm shooting now without being detected, or at least without the birds caring that I'm there. I think they always know, like I said earlier, that that you're there. But as long as they don't perceive you as a threat, um, you're fine. And that's what the the blinds or the hides, if you want to call them that, do for you. So anyway. Um, I think you can see my tripod a lot better now that it's lighter out and you can see I'm using a sidekick type uh, gimbal head made by Enduro. This is a, a Gitzo tripod, a travel tripod like I mentioned earlier with a center column which I find is perfect for little tight uh, spaces like this to where you're not really worried about it being too um, stable. It's not like you're shooting astrophotography or if you're shooting landscapes with really slow shutter speeds and stuff where you want your tripod big, bulky, weighted down and all that kind of stuff to keep everything as still as possible. You're shooting on a gimbal head, you're shooting active subjects a lot of times anyway. So being small, compact, easily adjusted for height, just like this, right? Up, down. You know, you don't have to sit here and think around with uh, adjusting the height of three legs. I'm in water right now. My feet are in water, okay? And so, you know, you don't want to have to be messing around too much when you're in a hide like this, on the, right on the edge of a pond. And so you want things as simple, small, quick as possible. And I found over the years, I've been doing this now for many, many years, that this setup really, really works well for me. So, um, with that, I'm gonna uh, end this part of it anyway from the inside of the of the blind and we'll take a look at the outside of the blind and I'll talk about how I added the camo and how this blind actually works because what's really cool about this blind these types of blinds is they're very small they're very light and they're you can put them up in like a minute literally in a minute so again when you're out doing this kind of stuff you got enough stuff to deal with especially if, if you're guiding people like I do you don't want to have to be messing around with stuff that doesn't work or that's, you know, that's really difficult to put up or take down. This puts up in a minute, takes down basically in a minute. So anyway, we'll talk about that coming up. All right, so we're done with the morning shoot this morning. Had a great time with the Kingfisher. Felt the Kingfisher this morning and uh, show you some pictures, right? A little bit later in the video here, but I wanted to show you the blind now that I'm out of it, um, back in the woods here. And uh, so, you know, we've got the two seats, like I said, you get your cup holders, stuff like that. But this is the style of blind that it is, it folds up. And then it's a clamshell. So basically, it just goes like that. That's how easily it, you know, is deployed. And just as easily how quickly you can uh, fold it up, right? That's it. And you can see all the extra camo that I put on it, uh, the brown stuff underneath. And I just zip tied it to the to the blind. And here's you know, here's how I. This would be the normal distance between the seats and the hole in the blind. But now, of course, I made it go in quite a bit closer to where you sit and use the green stuff and then I also put a little bit of a lip coming down so that's the depth I was talking about so now you can see that when you're sitting in there you can see out pretty well and that's a cool thing about the mesh as well you can see out but um, you know your your lens sticks through the hole whichever one works for you and it just stays there the whole time but uh, you know to get as close as I get to kingfishers and I'll have three three of these lined up or four of these lined up next to each other and we can shoot the kingfishers uh, all morning long and they really don't care that we're there uh, they know something's over there but they can't see a human form they can't see the movement we're making inside and that's really the, the point of the whole camouflaging of course I wear camouflage inside the blind uh, just to blend even more in with the with the shadows and with the green right uh, give it a little more depth so Anyway, that's, uh, that's it for the most part. And uh, you know, I'll just fold this up and put it on. I got a little wagon that I pull out here and, uh, and away we go. So I hope you uh, found this somewhat in informative and 
might think about getting something like this and applying it to, to your bird photography or wildlife photography because a lot of times, you know, just walking around uh, seeking good image opportunities just doesn't work very well. <laughs> you got you to gotta sit, sit tight, find a good spot, get camoed up and even use a blind or hide like this to, to really get close and get the shots that you're, that you're really looking for. So until next time, stay safe, get out there uh, and get some images and uh, we'll see you soon.